Welcome back. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's latest meeting on the debt ceiling ends with no deal, both sides claiming it was productive, but no agreement, no term sheet on a deal to avoid defaulting on debt. And we are less than 10 days away from Janet Yellen's deadline for when the United States will run out of money, which, of course, is June 1st. McCarthy says he wants to meet with the president every day until this is solved. Watch. We literally talked about where we were having disagreements and ideas. So to me, that's productive. Not progress, but productive. I would assume I'd meet with President Biden every day till we get this done. This is too important. Joining me right now is Ohio Congressman and Chairman of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Homeland Security, Congressman Dave Joyce. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Where do you feel there are areas of agreement on this debt ceiling uh, negotiation? Oh, thanks for having me, Maria. It's great to be here. Well, you know, one thing about Speaker McCarthy, he's claimed for a long time now that we need, he and the president need to sit down. The president dragged his feet for 98 days now to finally get here. And it's, this isn't new for uh, President Biden. He was a senator, he was a vice president, and now as president, he's been down this road before. So he knows how hard this is going to be because you have to have the two principals in the room to at least come to some top line numbers. The rest will fall in, in place after that. But it's important that those two sit down and come to those numbers. The Senate has done a good job of framing the issue. It's between the two of them. Once they get the top line numbers, the rest of this will be pretty easy to work out. Yeah, I mean, I know that there was some commonality on clawing the COVID-19 money that was unspent. That was one area that both sides agree can be done. Permitting is another area which came from Joe Manchin that's also making some progress. But I'm wondering about these caps on spending in the coming years and also on the work requirements. Kevin McCarthy has been pushing to get those work requirements as part of a deal as well, right? Absolutely. And most Americans agree that uh, you know, there should be work requirements. And we're not talking about anything that's paralyzing. We're talking about 20 hours a week and the ability to do service time, to educate, to do a bunch of other things in lieu of work, but somehow to be productive other than just sitting at home. And the, the caps, uh, that we've had a spending problem not a, a, a right now, and right, the money has been rolling in. And, you know, it's interesting. We're the only game in town, Maria. We passed a bill. Senate hasn't acted on it. The president yeah. hasn't done anything until really this week. But what it's yeah. done is put out the numbers for us and where we're at. So just come back with a counteroffer. Well, the president wants to see a counteroffer include a revenue raise. And that means he wants to raise taxes. Uh, the speaker has said uh, tax increases are off the table right now. So we'll have to keep watching that and speak with the speaker on that. Uh, I want to get your take on how you're using the appropriations process when it, as it relates to the border. Because the Republicans have been saying that that is the power of the purse that the Republicans have right now, that you will either rescind money or, or try to limit money to the FBI, given their wrongdoing. Will you do the same at the border? Border Patrol released this shocking video of somebody dropping a four-year-old baby over the border wall yesterday. I mean, how, how much worse can this get? Meanwhile, agents are apprehending more than 8,000 migrants in just 72 hours, more than 4,000 known gotaways. Uh, agents are also encountering several sex offenders, at least one gang member, Congressman. This border is wide open. What can you do from the appropriations uh, level uh, to counter this? I'm sorry to hear that about a four-year-old. There's nothing compassionate about what this uh, administration's policies have been at the board, no matter what they say. But we're doing this time, since we've had this first time we've had the ability to fashion a bill, is putting in language that actually ties border wall funding to the funding. You either build border wall or you can't use the money. And we've been more specific in that in every single line item account. We've also cut money in areas that have been used as a slush fund for this administration to continue to further their inhumane policies of letting people into this country and sending them all around with absolutely no guidance. We want to make sure that people come into this country legally and follow the laws. We're a nation of laws and we're a nation of immigrants, and those two don't have to contradict each other to work. Well, I mean, the Biden administration is blowing off laws left and right. We've seen that in the last two years pretty consistently. But, Congressman, mm -hmm. I want to get your take on China as well, because, of course, we know the economic coercion that China uses against the world. And they have these new national security laws that enable them to 
march into any American company they want and start raiding the place like they did at Bain Capital and steal intellectual property and, and also uh, just rule out any American company doing business there. So a potential U.S. response to China's chip ban on Micron technology is reportedly to place South Korea in a, different, a difficult spot. Seoul's trade minister is already saying that it will be uh, left to the individual companies to decide whether they continue to do business with China. Um, of course, we know that China is banning Micron Technologies uh, chips, saying that they are a national security risk in China. I spoke with Florida Congressman Carlos Jimenez yesterday on this program to discuss American companies and how they're operating there in China, and he brought up Apple. And he said he's worried about Apple doing business in China and they need to get out. Watch this. Apple is unbelievably vulnerable to, uh, to China right now. And uh, we've uh, advised them, hey, it's time to get out because eventually China will pull that string and China will cut you off. So what about that, Congressman? We've been talking about this strategy that the Chinese Communist Party uses on um, uh, on American companies, foreign companies, rob, replicate, replace. That is what John Ratcliffe told me a long time ago, that that is the strategy, rob, replicate, replace. Is there anything you can do uh, from your standpoint on the appropriations process to counter China? Yes, and as a matter of fact, after I leave this, I'm going down to a, the SCIF to have a briefing on China with their cybersecurity. That is where we can fashion in a lot more money into helping our cybersecurity forces against the Chinese influence, but also making sure that uh, we're procuring American parts. Uh, in, in my district, we have Foxconn coming in to build chips. I know Micron's moved around and other uh, chip makers are coming in. And it's important that we bring those, that manufacturing home so we know that it's being built under American standards and not with spyware uh, installed in it. Should we be decoupling from China? Should these American companies get out before they get raided and, th and, and uh, theft? It's certainly in their best interest to. You can't trust China. They're not our friend. They're not an ally. They are out for world domination in just what as, uh, John Ratcliffe had told you. That has been their motto since 1945. They did it slowly but surely with the steel industry. If you go through South America, I was with Speaker McCarthy on a codel in South America. Every single new thing that was being built, bridges, mining activity, everything was Chinese. That's in our backyard. They're everywhere, and they need to be replaced. Well, have you told Joe Biden that? Because Joe Biden keeps calling them a competitor, not an adversary. Well, you know, uh, President Biden says a lot of things that are uh, inconsistent and not true with uh, the modern day world. But for those of us who watch it daily, China has a very corrupting influence around the world. And, you know, just last summer, I was with Senator Coons in Africa. Same problem. Yeah. They're in the mining yeah. activity. They're everything. Everywhere there's a dollar being spent, it's their money. Big time in Africa, for sure. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. We'll keep a spotlight on it for sure. Thank you very much for having me, Maria. Have a great day. Congressman Dave Joyce in D.C. Thank you. Same to you, sir.